hi ho and howdy everybody, my name is Shannon Shook and welcome to episode number 48, Irma Gurdness. It's another episode, um, it's, huh, um, in the last episode of Katawa Shoujo, we, um, woke up after the finger party with Rin, um, uh, we talked, uh, and Hasao was kind of a douche. And and then he went then he went to school and then he talked to the teacher and the teacher got mad kinda and 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 now we're here and we're gonna go to her exhibition soon. So Dare it be um Okay, let's do this. Also can we talk about this music? Um, anyway, the day after that, all the missed opportunities and things I should have said come crashing down on me. There's nothing left to do afterwards but brood. Second day, I begin to feel anxious. I start doubting my doubt, and it feels stupid, especially since I still can't think of anything else than Rin. Day 45. Um, nope. Third day, Japanese exam and world history exam. Great. The thing I, I mean, fucking world history is cool. Again, I, I maintain that history is one of the better classes in schools. That, that, fuck a paper that you have to write on the shit. But learning about world history is fucking rad. Even the horrible shit. Looking at you, Hitler! Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> the thing I hate most about her is... The, okay. Is that she can make me feel this awful, even though I should be focusing on entirely different stuff right now. Fourth day. Math exam. We have a math exam. It goes how it goes. Fuck it all. My man is getting pissed and fucking pessimistic as shit. Fifth day. And me asked me again if I will attend the exhibition opening. I can't say no to him even though I seriously want to. I just don't want to discuss with him anything Rin related. So it's just better to take the path of least resistance. Well, hello. On the sixth day of Christmas, I ran into Rin in the fucking hallway with some stuff. Okay. <laughs> uh, the day before the exhibition opening, I find Rin standing in the hallway in front of my room when I return to the dorms after dinner. Uh, what are you doing here? Oh, well, I said it's sad-like, but apparently you're a prick. Um, my tone is angrier than I intended. I'm a little disappointed that I wasn't able to restrain myself, but I can't really be helped. Rin just stands there, like she just happened to coincidentally be standing around here where she has no business being. The way she reacts so coolly to everything annoys me now. This is not good. It's been six days and the sight of her has me boiling. She hasn't even opened her mouth yet. I finished painting. That was pretty neat. Shouldn't you be at the gallery, preparing? They said no. I guess the gallery owner does that part then getting the paintings framed, hung up on the walls, and whatnot. So, why are you here? Felt like it. The same old stupid pattern emerges again. Me asking her questions to which she replies with answers that don't answer anything, because it's the only other way we can converse. Apart from me listening to her bab blabbering on about whatever, which isn't really a conversation. Is this a play? Are there some unseen roles that we have unknowingly set ourselves into, dictating the rules of engagement whenever we see each other, inevitably leading us to hurting each other? Her nonchalant answers, accompanied by even more nonchalant shrugs, leave me none the wiser. I guess I should be happy that the exhibition preparations are complete. When I walk into my room, I hear her footsteps following me in. I did not invite her in, but I'm not going to ask her to leave. She claims my bed without asking permission, making me wish that I had taken the time to make it before I left in the morning, then stands up again as though she sat on hot coals. I half lean against the single corner of my desktop that isn't cluttered with stuff to rest my legs at least a little bit. Rin spends a few moments glancing curiously around my room and makes me realize that she's never seen it before. 
For a moment, she actually looks like she's concentrating, trying to get everything. This must be the eye for detail that makes her an artist. Since the room is small, she quickly runs out of things to look at, but nothing else transpires, allowing the uncomfortable silence to take over the atmosphere. The mood is chilly to say the least, and both of us are on guard, waiting for the other to make the first move. Of course, Rin could play this game forever, so it has to be me. So... Uh... How about that weather? I give up because she never tried to open conversation, and because it seems that she just wants to say something and I want to get it over with. Why else would she be here if she didn't want to talk? She wants to stare at your rippled, ripple, ab abs, you look like a god. What? I mean, <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know what to say myself. Sometimes I just think, like, this is me normally, so me, like, whacked out of my mind on drugs would have to be just nightmarish. Like, nothing would ever get done. It would be even less funny and yet I would still probably laugh at my not funniness even more. So it's it's weird. L <sighs> I, can't be funny. I don't know what to say to myself. Uh, I want to be angry, but I can't bring myself to yell at her or anything. My voice catches her attention. She tries to search for words as well, but it seems that she's not entirely certain as to why she's here either. And so Rin simply takes a few steps to close the distance between us and rises on the tips of her toes to even out the height difference. That was a bad idea. Maybe you should forget about it, and I will too. It's a reflex, and I almost as an afterthought, the words no, yes, and maybe simultaneously surface on my mind. My hand is between her lips and mine, a wall that I raise to guard against... something. Her breath feels warm against my fingers. The scent of her skin lingers about, the mysterious, indescribable sensation that captures me and draws my eyes deep into hers. The look in her eyes is surprised, quizzical as to why the impertinent hand prevented her advances. Bitch, I was gonna kiss you. Why did she put your hand there, that you silly goose? Her eyes are really, bli bi bleh, really big and glistening with moisture, and staring right into my own with a soft gaze that I'm having a hard time to match. Rin's half-open mouth makes her look even more confused, although the sensual way her lips are arcing is signaled something completely different. Please... I need you. The words come out of her throat as a coarse whisper meant only for me, bypassing her tongue and teeth without giving them any chance to interrupt. They sober me in an instant, and I clumsily flinch back to get a bit of distance between us, painfully scraping my back. I scra scrape it against my desk to the process. Maybe it's her choice of words, maybe the way she says it, but something in it puts me off. It's, yeah. Again, I'm, I'm a total emotional, like... I'm a lover boy, like, oh girl, I need you, but someone like going like, I, I need you, I, that fucking would trip me out, that'd just be like, okay, well, I love you too, but you need to back the fuck up off of me, cause you're creeping me out, and I don't, I just, I, give me a moment, okay, uh, yeah, okay, um, something is wrong, something is terribly, terribly wrong again, need me for what? All the unpleasant feelings emerge again. I feel my heartbeat suddenly increasing at least tenfold. And his heart grew ten sizes that day. Also, that's bad. You're gonna die now. Don't do that. Don't die. Rin's eyes go out of focus and back again as her body relaxes from its tense state and she stands up, up bleh, stands upright again. I don't think I was thinking about anything. Why do you draw patterns in that dusk on your on the on the dust on your night table? There's a word for that kind of thing, but I can't remember. Her mark almost throws me off track, and I glance over her shoulder at the small table next to my bed, but I can't see anything from this distance. So she needs me for nothing specific? Just happened to come by because she thought it'd be I'd be glad to see her after she shut me out, no complaints accepted for a week? Completely, completely altruistic motives? You have a point. Felt like it? Bullshit. I can answer myself. To play mind games with, uh, 
to play mind games with whenever you want, to kiss whenever you want, to ignore whenever you want, to fulfill your whims whenever you want, and now we're being kind of a dick again. Again, I understand, my man, but you need to come. <sighs> Is that it? Is that what you need me for? Her voice is sounding very, or my voice is sounding very angry again, even to myself. Yeah, well, I mean, you seem to be fucking upset. My voice is sounding very angry. Oh, I just feel good at the end of it. He mad. Bryn, too, finally catches the mood, and her curious expression changes instantly to something more uncharacteristic. No. She leaves it at that, her eyes restlessly wandering around, searching the room as if the words she tries to find were written into the tapestries among walls. Then what? I needed to paint. Paint. Of course, that's what artists do. The words reverberate through my being, beating in my blood over the piercing whistle of my anger. Don't give me that, Rin! I'm not some damn muse of yours free to play with for the sake of painting! I'm not some medium for whatever you aspire to. I'm me. So what if I don't know anything about my future? There's things that I want and things that I care about. Even I can dream of things other than nightmares. I'm yelling, but I'm way past the point of caring about other things like that. Rin looks down at her toes and wiggles them a little melancholically while she takes my outburst uh, without saying anything to defend herself. Only after I've finished does she try to respond somehow. I can't do anything else. I can do all sorts of things, but I can't do... It's the only thing... It's the only thing I sort of do properly most of the time. I understand completely. Art first, everything else second, or thousandth. What about me? Am I nothing? When I was interested in art, did that make you feel like I was a little interesting for a little while? Tell me. I really want to know. Did you ever think about my perspective, or is it just all you? The words rise like bile in my throat. She looks alarmed, but also completely uncomprehending, as if she doesn't understand what I'm angry about. I can't believe she could be so stupid. I, I didn't want to. This time it's Ren who interrupts herself in mid-sentence. Don't you understand? I can't! Can't what? You never explain! How am I supposed to understand anything if you never say anything? Why don't you ever just talk? SAY SOMETHING! But she doesn't. Venting my anger at her feels satisfying. It feels wrong to take so much satisfaction in it, but I can't stop. Not wanting to face my anger head on, Rin turns around to steadfastly look out my window, even though there is nothing to look at. The worst of my eye are gone, I shut up as I can't be bothered to keep yelling at the back of her head, so silence finally returns. I try to discern some hints of her reaction through my adrenaline-destroyed vision. My feedback was not the best kind, but I hope Rin got the clue that she can't just ignore everything else when she feels like it. Again, you have points. Your words mean, they, they, they have a lot of meaning, and they, they're, they're important to have been said. I have to just believe there was a nicer way to make that happen. I clicked off the fucking screen again. <laughs> okay, we're back. I'd hate it if she didn't. She never ever listens to anything. She's so unaffected by the world around her. Not this time, it seems. Her body is shaking like like someone holding back tears, but I already know that Rin is not crying. Her indifference made me so furious. Now that it's gone, I'm at a loss. I wondered... Did I go too far? Look, I... Go away. Go away, Hisao. Her voice is tiny and tired as she says this. I said it mean very loud, but I hear the words clear as day. What is there to say anymore? This is my room. The blunt hollow remark is a fitting conclusion for this unpleasant discussion that became an even more unpleasant and very one-sided yelling match. After a moment of collecting herself, Rin just gives up. I can see it from the way she slumps her shoulders and walks out. Even though she deliberately looks at the other direction, I can see how she's biting the corner of her lips so hard it might start bleeding if she don't stop. If she won't stop. As she makes her exit, I realize that she left the door open when she came in, and my yelling must have echoed through the dorm hallways. <sighs> now that she's gone, I'm left alone with my guilt. 
As the thumping in my chest slowly subsides, anxiety replaces it. Somehow I feel like none of this would have ever happened if not for me. No matter how frustrating, unbearable, and outrageous Rin is, she's not the Rin I thought I knew. The Rin that I expected Rin to be. And was it me who caused all this by, taking, by talking Rin into taking her chances with the exhibition? Am I directly responsible for Rin becoming the way she has for the past few weeks? I can't think of any other explanation for her weird behavior than the expositional things that came along with it. Maybe it was the only way that I could have brought us closer, but all it did was separate us further away from each other, and now beyond the reach of either of us. I know that feeling. I've, I've been... Been there before, dude. Well, this has been a pleasant, a pleasant video.